Today on Media Mementos, we're going to be discussing the grandfather of all Christmas specials. Before there was Rudolph or Charlie Brown, there was Santa Claus's turpentine-tastic Deer Bear Christmas Palooza. What? Before there was Rudolph or Charlie Brown, there was Mr. Magoo. If it wasn't for him, we never would have gotten the Grinch. Santa Claus is coming to town or Cricket on the Hearth. Come on, uh, tell me I'm not the only one who remembers that. Thank you very much, shelf number 5901 from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I knew I could count on you. And that's why I fight for you, Albuquerque. Better call. Shelf number 5901 here. But if you're wondering how Mr. Magoo of all things was the pioneer for Christmas specials yet to come, well, you've come to the right place. And I actually hadn't seen this thing up until recently. This, my friends, is the complete history of Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. Our story starts off in the 1930s and 40s with the theatrical age of animation. United Productions of America, from here on out known as UPA, was most known for making a series about a blind man who was bumbling through life called Mr. Magoo. Oh, oh, there you are! They were consistently box office hits, pretty much keeping UPA alive single-handedly. However, in the 1950s, the television age came around and UPA couldn't keep up. Now that their cartoons no longer relied on box office returns for their money and instead had to rely on advertisers from the networks, they were hemorrhaging money. As a result, they had to cheapen their animation year after year in order to stay afloat. But even that wasn't enough. They were getting close to either pulling out of the television industry or folding altogether. They needed something to put them back in the red. A final ditch effort which would become the first ever made-for-TV Christmas special. Up until this point, there had been Christmas movies aired on TV, but none of them were made especially for TV, and UPA decided to fill that void. And they decided to do so with their bread and butter, Mr. Magoo. And thus, Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol was born. Abe Levitel, one of the creative minds behind this special, wanted to make a Mr. Magoo adaptation of A Christmas Carol God bless us, everyone. Because in his own words, both Scrooge and Magoo are nearsighted in their human understanding. Plus, Magoo's voice is a natural for Scrooge. Do -do 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 -do. I don't quite see it, but okay. When production began, the special was very different than the version that would later air on TV. It was more in line with the previous Mr. Magoo theatrical shorts, being considerably more comedic in tone than the Charles Dickens novel. Pretty quickly though, UPA got cold feet, and they decided to make it a lot closer to the book. When asked why UPA decided to backtrack on their original vision, producer Lee Orgel had this to say, We got to thinking how almost sacred Dickens' Christmas Carol has become with many people, and decided it might not be in good taste to have Magoo caricature Scrooge too broadly. As a result, the script was rewritten to remove most of the Magooisms from this Mr. Magoo special. <coughs> Him mistaking objects for different objects or not knowing where he is, they would all have to go. Though with that being said, there would be some narrative changes like the Ghost of Christmas Present arriving before the Ghost of Christmas Past, but in order to justify these changes, it was decided that this Christmas Carol story would actually be a play that Magoo was starring in, and on the way to the play, he would have all the kinds of Mr. Magoo shenanigans you would expect. But then when it came time to adapt the novel, then he would become serious. You could consider this a compromise of sorts between adaptation and brand loyalty. If only the current producers of Hollywood would understand how that works. Since by this point UPA was running on fumes, they cut as many corners as they could, including recycling several assets from other shows they produced, most notably Gerald McBoing Boing, as well as reducing the frames per second in certain scenes, most notably at the beginning of the We're Despicable song in the third act, which also just so happens to be my favorite. Just for a kick we knock, you bet. And while the special was designed to be as economical as possible, UPA also wanted this to be as marketable as possible, but not in the same kind of pandering way that most producers have been doing for the last couple decades. 
Instead, they wanted to genuinely make this as good as it could be for every demographic. It was chiefly made with kids in mind, knowing fully well that the parents would have to sit down and watch the special with them, and at the same time, the darker elements of the story or the more serious aspects would be tailor-made for the adult audience so that they would enjoy watching the special with their kids, not just when this first came on, but every year after that. UPA had a dream, and that dream was to have Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol become an all-time Christmas classic, one that families around the world would watch every single year. The main way they would achieve this was through the songs. In fact, the producers had their hopes set so high that they hoped that the songs from Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol would make their way into the yearly holiday rotation, right up there with the likes of Jingle Bells or Deck the Halls. Sort of like what would happen to have a holly jolly Christmas a couple years later. To make their song dreams come true, so to speak, great care was taken to make each one sound different. Except for the reprises, of course, they would obviously be the same. Some would be more serious, some would be more wholesome, some would be funny. Whatever kind of songs you liked, this special would have them. See, this is the kind of pandering I'm okay with. They're not pandering just to get your money or attention. They're pandering to stay alive. Finally, in 1962, the special was done. One thing of note is that now that the special was finished, nobody would be credited for their work. Back then, it was taboo to credit voice actors for animated roles. Yeah, apparently producers and networks were worried that voice actors getting credit would break the illusion. I'm glad we got past those dark times. To be fair, most people knew who voiced Magoo around this time anyways, so... NBC decided to pick this special up, and they wanted to air it on December 18th, 1962. Specifically at 7.30 Eastern Time, and this was important because it would preempt the very popular show, Laramie. The special aired with great ratings and glowing reviews. Except for this one Memphis newspaper that one of my editors found. I don't know why, but the guy who wrote this just really had it out for Mr. Magoo. Every fool who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a steak of holly through his heart. Eh, there's one in every crowd. For the most part, people fell in love with Magoo all over again. And sure enough, just as UPA had hoped, the special was reran again and again and again. Tonight, Mr. Magoo in A Christmas Carol. The special proved to be so popular that it got its own spin-off. The famous adventures of Mr. Magoo followed a very similar plot line to Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol, being that each episode would feature Magoo playing the role of a famous literary or historical figure. Despite the show being similarly well-received, it unfortunately didn't last all too long. Even though Christmas Carol was a hit, it wasn't enough to save UPA. All it really did was kick the can down the road. No, no spirit! Therefore, they had to retire from animation, and would later be bought up by various companies and affiliates, only to be officially shut down in the year 2000. As for the special itself, its success spawned a bunch of other, I wouldn't quite say copycats, but people who wanted to follow in its footsteps. Take, for example, Rankin Bass, who only two years later would make a stop-motion special based on the song Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. In later years, the special's popularity would dip a bit, but it never truly went away. It would still pop up here and there during the Christmas season, but then in later years, Freeform got a hold of the rights to air Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol, and for some reason that I could not figure out, they decided to trim the special. It's not all that long, it's an hour tops with commercials, so I'm not sure why they decided to cut out some of the songs or scenes. And hey, they cut out my favorite song, so, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be watching that airing under any circumstances. But if you've got the DVD or VHS, that won't be a problem. And that there is the history of Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol, the special that started it all. While it wasn't able to save its production company like its producers hoped, one of their wishes did indeed come true. The special would be a renowned classic that generations of families would adore. And that doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. Well folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? 
What do you think of Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol and what stuff did you learn from this video? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. And now it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon people, starting with our Masters of Fate. Chan 11, Drew the Stew, Ellis Amir Rogers Archer, Kev Messick, Platinum Bass, Quiet Chap, Ryan Williams, Timey, and Woody Woo. And now our executive producers, Albert Robinson, Blackjack, H.R. Hoffman, Indiscreet One, Leaf Storm, Ravioli Supremo, Unkale, and who else but Zane? If you too would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then why not consider donating to the Patreon? There's a fancy little link in the description below for you to check out. And if you want to get more involved in the Media Mementos fan community, there's a link to the channel's Discord server as well. Feel free to stop on by and say hello. Alright folks, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time. Do you remember the way? Remember it? The foundlings are the future. This is the way.